Hi everybody, welcome to today's Vulcan JS stream. So what you're seeing right now is uh, an Airbnb clone. Uh, it's a project I'm working on. Of course, right now it looks super ugly because it's um, still just bootstrap and not even nice bootstrap, just uh, pieces th thrown together, but it actually does work. So, um, Maybe I can start by giving you a quick tour of what's already there, and then I'll talk about what I want to build today. So if you could look at the Airbnb homepage, and I actually also have a, a mock-up here. So I'm building uh, this project for a friend, so I'm helping him out with his company. And you can think of this as an Airbnb for Japan. So we have this uh, search area here, and then a uh, different lists of um, rooms of listings and so right now we have the same structure here so the search area and then the featured rooms and this kind of list is something uh, Vulkan does really well you know you just use the with list component you pass it a terms object and then it will spit out a list like that so you can click through so what you're seeing here actually is a, a new uh, card component I built recently. Same here. Basically, I wanted a way to uh, quickly display uh, a document, but without actually having to build a new React component for it. So uh, this card component will um, look at the document, look at the schema, and try its best to, to guess how the document should be displayed. So just iterating over the fields in the in the document and then you know if it's an image it shows an image if it's a number it adds uh, some formatting if it's an object with nested fields it, it tries to just loop over it and, and show each level of then of nesting and so on so that's pretty handy um but of course the idea is eventually to replace that with an actual uh, you know react component that also includes uh, an edit form, by the way. So, um, so yeah, and here you have uh, bookings. So these are the the bookings that correspond to the room and the current user. And below that, the reviews for the room. All of this again using the card component, uh, edit form, and so on. So that's that's pretty cool because it's really quick to. To, to, to build, you can really quickly prototype out uh, an app like that. And then when you're ready, yeah, you go back and you replace this by an actual React, custom-made React component. So what can you do with a room? I'm actually going to take another room, maybe. Um, how about, let me find one that doesn't have any bookings. Uh, okay, they all have one, but let's take, let's pick this one. Or actually, yeah, maybe we can create a new room. Um, so I'm gonna go to, to Airbnb to find some nice rooms. Uh, this is actually a place where I was thinking about staying or having other people stay for uh, an event I'm organizing in Japan. So let's save the images. Okay new room so I recently modified the image upload component so that it can accept multiple images so that's pretty cool it is a bit buggy and as you can see I haven't worked on the layout yet but it works and it works uh, with um, Cloudinary by the way so maybe in the future we can add different uh, upload image upload providers that'd be pretty cool so okay let's say five beds five guests and submit okay so oh that's interesting there's a as you can see it's showing the reviews here which is not possible because we just posted it so uh, there's probably a, a bug somewhere and, and I probably need to double check my terms for this list but anyway, for now, we'll uh, book the room from, uh, let's say, August 1 to 
five. So you can see this creates a new booking object and I can complete the payment. So note that there's no paid at field yet. So let's wait a little bit. So it's hitting the Stripe servers, getting the token back, then performing the, the operation. Yeah, and then pay that has been completed. And if we go back to the room, um, the booking we just did from August 1 to 5 has appeared. So that's, that's working. Um, let me figure out why this isn't working properly though. So let's inspect. So this would be reviews list and um, terms. So I'm passing a room ID and view, but not user ID. So it makes sense that, um, actually no, it doesn't make sense because this room can't have uh, reviews yet. So what could be going on? It might be in my, uh, in my view, in the room reviews view. Uh, let's check this out. So, rooms, uh, views. Uh, oh, it's actually going to be in reviews. Oh, you know what? I may have just. Okay. Yeah, I think I just haven't created that view yet. So, in Vulkan, basically, a view is a, a preset for how to display a list of documents. So here's the rooms search preset, which I don't think I'm actually using, but basically you can define, hey, I want room search. The room search view to always be uh, sorted by sticky and then base score. So instead of uh, defining each parameter individually, you can kind of define a function that returns an object with all the information. But anyway, um, yeah, so this is the one view that we do have and we are using it uh, that shows you your bookings so this one and as you can see this one is working uh, it takes terms and then it uses terms.user id and terms.room id to build a mongo selector so that's what we want to do for um, the reviews so this is a view for reviews so i'm actually going to create it here So uh, import reviews, place this, and that would be um, the reviews for a room. So let's call it room reviews. And then we do not want to filter by room ID, but we do want to filter, I mean, we do not want to filter by user ID, but we do want to filter by room ID. Yes. So. Uh, it should look something like this, and then we'll uh, add add this in here. Okay, room reviews, room reviews. Let's see. So these reviews should disappear. Let's see if, um, yep. Okay, cool. So that was it. I just had didn't hadn't created the view yet, so it couldn't work. Um, now, if I do leave a comment, so I have some bug with the text area um, where it loses focus. It's very annoying. Uh, it might be an extension or something. Anyway, yeah, I mean a Chrome extension. Uh, it does it's not happening in other browsers so but anyway I can post and I can uh, edit so that's working okay now what else do we have here um, we also have a search so I uh, remember I booked that room from August 1 to 5th 
So if I search here for something that's available between, let's say, July 27th and August 2nd, um, our room shouldn't appear. So as you can see, we have these four rooms, but we do not have um, the, the stunning Kyomachia, and there's another one that's missing that's also booked. I think my awesome room is also booked at these dates. So that's working. Um, actually, that, that took a little bit of custom coding because these lists uh, just use the default list resolver where uh, you pass um, you know, you pass a set of terms and it looks in the database, it, and it looks at the rooms collection, it filters out the ones we don't need and it returns the results. But for this uh, booking search, we want to uh, look not only at the rooms the, uh, collection, but also at the bookings collection, because we want to show the room that don't have bookings during these dates. Um, so in order to do that, first I had to write a custom resolver uh, the resolver itself isn't super uh, complicated. Um, basically, there's two uh, parameters in the terms which are um, passed through the URL. There's a from and to. And then I look, uh, the, so I build my Mongo selector for bookings. So I look for all the bookings that start after um, the from date. Uh, and yeah, start after the from date and before the to date. So that start in between both bounds or that end in between both bounds. And that should cover all, uh, all scenarios. And I get this, I get these uh, results, I get their IDs and then I just return all the rooms. Um, I get, sorry, I get the ID of the room associated with the booking and then I return all the rooms whose ID is not in that set of booked IDs. So not super complex and it seems to work. Um, you'll notice it's, it's, uh, it's called room search, that resolver, and I'm adding it uh, kind of through the, the manual uh, GraphQL APIs that Vulkan exposes. So I'm not using the uh, like traditional uh, a list resolver and that's because I wanted to keep the list resolver uh, separately as well for things like um, like the rooms here and you know there's probably a way to have everything work in a single resolver and I could probably yeah and I, in fact I might do that later but for now I, I am um, yeah the two separate resolvers and that means I also have a separate uh, uh, container, which I, I basically I copied with list and then I, I removed a lot of stuff that I didn't need. And um, I should change the name actually. So this is now with search. Now, should you build your own container or should you use with list for everything? Um, it's hard to say, like it's, it's good obviously to reuse code and to keep things uh, Um, centralized um, but on the other hand with list is pretty complex and I, I didn't know if it was worth it like let's adding one more layer of complexity just so we can handle different resolvers and different use cases so I figured I'd start with like this custom uh, version and see yeah how that works maybe in the future go back to using with list but um, I mean, with list could could be used with this. Um, I just have to add an option to specify the list resolver name. Right now, you know, it always looks for the list resolver as defined on the collection. But I could definitely let you pass that manually if you prefer. So then I could probably use it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, there's no clear answer for me right now. Um, but for example, I guess one thing that does matter is that WithList has this whole uh, reducer logic to know how to update documents. And that's a good example, actually. How to um, how to insert new documents when they 
uh, when they appear in uh, on the client. Like if if you, if I were to insert a new room right now, um, Wiflist will know whether to show it here or not, because the filters are relatively simple. So it's filtering based on the properties of the room itself. So if the room is available on the client, it can do the filtering. Now, in this use case, we're filtering uh, based on properties of the bookings collection, which is not published to the client. Um, that's, that stays on the server. So that's this filtering, we can only do it on the server. So that's important to understand. If I were to add a new room right now, uh, it would not appear here. And you know, you could argue that a new room won't have any booking, so it would make sense to show it here. But practically speaking, um, if you add a new room, you're not going to want to, you know, add it in here yourself. So you don't want to book it yourself, right? So there's not real uh, a real use case for um, updating this list of documents on the client. You'll always want to update it from the server and then send that list. Uh, of server results to the client. It's probably a bit confusing if you're not used to the, the mental model of how uh, data updates work in, in Apollo. Um, but basically what I'm trying to say is for this specific list, I, I don't need to update it on the client. So I don't need the reducer that I have in with list. So it might make sense to create a new container that doesn't have that reducer. Okay. So moving on, uh, what else do we need to do here? Obviously, I'll need to take some time to make it a, look a bit nicer. And uh, I want to make this into a, an example, by the way, for a Vulkan. So uh, I need to make it look nicer, uh, maybe add some code comments, maybe um, uh, internationalize everything, because right now it's all hard coded. So that might be a good thing to do. Um, but I guess right now uh one thing i should do is yeah so okay we've booked this one right so if uh someone whether it's me or somebody else wants to book it again we shouldn't we should disable these dates because they're already booked so that that's something uh, that's going to be kind of interesting to do because we have to think about it in a, a couple of different ways. And the first thing is, well, how do we know uh, on the client which dates are booked? Because again, we, we we don't have access to the, the raw bookings data, to the bookings collection. Because obviously um, that, that might be private information, right? Just because, I mean, I guess there's two aspects to it. First, it might be private, like um, just because you want to show when a room isn't available doesn't necessarily mean you want to send all the booking data, including start and end dates to the client. And second, uh, that, that's a lot of extra data that you don't really need, right? If what I'm saying here is if there's a booking from July 1 to 8 and then one from uh, 9 to 15, one from 16 to 22, all you want to know is these dates are not available. You don't need to have the details of each booking. So um, that's a reason why we're not going to just send booking data to the client. So we'll probably need some kind of custom resolver um, that just sends, you know, uh, actually, what should it send? Maybe a list of bounds or a list of dates, maybe just a list of dates. That would be the easiest. Now let's see how our uh, date picker thing works because we have to uh, to know what kind of data it expects to um, to like disable a date for example um, so let's go to our components the bookings um, okay so I guess there's an added wrinkle which is that this is inside the smart form Hmm. So we'll need to pass the data to the smart form or else uh, not use a smart form, which is probably the smart thing to do here because uh, it's going to be a pain. So basically uh, a smart form means that this is generated from the schema and the schema specifies to use a date picker. 
but there isn't any way to specify uh, to disable dates currently. So le okay, let's see if we can implement that. I guess the first first step is um, open our date time component, and we're using React date time. And if we look here, we have a few options, value on change format, input props. Let's see if there's anything about like disabling dates. It doesn't seem like there's any um, built-in stuff, is there? Oh yeah, there is. Okay. The function receives current date selected date and shall return a true or false um, value whether the current date is valid or not. So we want to specify this somehow. Well, let's just you know hard code it for now and and, and see what happens. So. Um, And oh, I forgot that. So we'll uh, log the selected date. I don't think we need the current date. Oh, okay, the current, right, current meaning, uh, yeah, today. Well, I guess you can't book in the past, right? So that would be a good start, actually. So yesterday, um, Do we have moment? No, we don't. Now this date time thing. Um, Yeah, I don't need, okay. I guess daytime has its own copy of moment, yeah, but I, I don't need that. I have my own, so, and then current date. I guess, which is a moment itself. Okay, okay, so let's see if this uh, succeeds in, in disabling all uh, dates in the past. Because yeah, you cannot uh, make a booking for a past date. That, that makes sense. That's a good starting point before we even worry about uh, disabling like uh, dates that are already booked. So I'm gonna book this room and yeah, it works. I might need a bit of styling, but yeah, ideally we'd wanna style them differently whether they're in the past or just already booked. But you know what? For now, let's not worry about it. I'll, I'll just uh, add some. Uh, um, so I'm using just SAS for. Uh, I thought about using style, style component, but since I might work on this project with other people, I figured let's keep it simple for now. Um, Uh, I guess it's uh, it's gonna be you have to use the whole uh, 
The whole selector? Okay. That might work. Anyway, it's not super important. Okay, yeah. So red means disabled. Cool. Now, okay, let's. Uh, we don't want to hard code that in our daytime component, right? Because uh, we don't know if uh, some other apps won't need to select dates in the past. So, uh, how do we pass this as a prop and where do we pass it from? We'll probably want to pass it from the schema. Another thing we'll want to do eventually is not let you select a checkout date before a check-in date. Um, yeah, that sounds like a pain to do as well. <laughs> so, but anyway, for now, let's, um, so this is our booking schema. You know, let's see how far we can go doing it this way. So let's say form options. Um, options, I don't know. Um, so this would be Okay, and then the question is, are we passing these options, this form stuff to the component? So probably, we probably have to go down the chain here. So I know there's a, okay, add options if they exist. So if field schema dot form and field schema form options exist, field field options um, yeah so this should be avail available at field options and then here it should be available as well and then get passed down to the component so you know what let's save and, um, and now let's remove this and then Let's wait a little bit and then we'll use our React Inspector to see if the props are coming down all the way to the uh, date time component, or at least the, the, yeah, the ones that's, that's wrapping it. Oh, I have errors in the schema. Did I forget a comma or something? Um. Oh, okay, yeah. Bracket. Oh, and I don't have moment. Good, so that should work. So again, right now we're just trying to see if we can pass out prop successfully all the way down the chain, or prop being the uh, options object all the way down the chain to the component that sets the date. So I'm going to inspect this, go to React. And then that will be date time and options is validate. Yeah, that works. So all we need to do now is here we'll uh, so this will be this props option I always forget I don't need this or do, do I need no yeah I do need it yes Now, so um, the thing is though, this is a good way to pass uh, a function defining our schema, but here we want to depend on um, dates that are 
basically we want the content of that function to depend on dates that are passed from the database so we can't really make a database call in here because we're you know I mean maybe we could but that would be a uh, super complicated so I'm not actually sure uh, yeah by the way this this works so we'll keep that actually that's a good improvement just uh, accepting the the options object and passing it to the date time picker that's a, a really good idea but so we'll keep this but I'm not sure that our uh, that we can push this approach much further you know using a, a smart form since smart form is defined by the schema I feel we'll always kind of hit uh, a wall um, yeah when it comes to defining something like that plus as I was saying before we probably want the date that you pick in the uh, start date to in impact the one that you can pick for the end date so it would mean we would have to this function would have to consider both uh, the data that's coming from the server and also the data that's internal to the form which you know isn't impossible um, but it's just not super simple unless maybe we wrap it with like redux or something um, yeah because this guy doesn't I guess it should know about the other values in the form but it doesn't like it could know but even if this component knows um, how do you pass that to is validate is valid date unless you pass it when you call it uh, as you can see you know just talking about it is getting messy so you know what Let, let's scrap this and um, so basically what we'll do instead is uh, let me find my new bookings new form component here we just want to use smart form and we can still submit to the same uh, with new method that smart form would submit to uh, the only part that changes is the, the whole management of the form and the form state so uh, knowing that we want to do that we probably need a class because there's going to be state So this is a good example that sometimes you just need to do things manually, even in Vulkan. You shouldn't try to, you know, fit a round peg in a square hole. Maybe is it a square peg in a round hole? I never know. I guess it depends on the size of the peg and the hole. But in any case, it's not a good fit right now. Uh, so a custom class will be a lot better. So, okay, let's do super. For some reason we have to do super all the time uh, that should be constructor sorry render turn uh, what do we want to return let's take this for now um, now okay why did I need with okay I need router to, to do the redirection I'm probably gonna keep do I wanna keep this? Um uh, I guess I can keep that. So I'm not going to keep this on the other hand. Um I might keep so the success callback would probably be a different function. So this props router dot push. Oh, I'm tired of making lots of typos. Uh, let me just see if there's any messages around. No. So okay, I'm binding success. Um, I can remove this so 
so I already yeah let's copy uh, some other form I have here so uh, we don't want to do on change it's gonna be on submit submit form so uh, what are we gonna have in here so um so I guess there's a question do we try to use this thing or do we just use this directly I don't think there's necessarily any any reason why we would use that um, yeah I think we can just use this so we don't need to to pick the whole date time wrapper so basically date time is a wrapper that adapts this to work inside uh, smart forms you know calling like update current values update date in this case though I don't think we need that I'm not sure if this is gonna work with form C but we'll uh, will manage somehow. So instead we'll, uh, well, I guess we'll pick the whole thing here. We might clean this up more later, but so this would be from to, of course, we want to import this guy. Now value, this is for creating a new date, so new booking, so there won't be any value. Well, although this probably, yeah, we need to manage the state and stuff, so yeah, we do need that. Ah, forms in React, so much fun. Uh, do we need to, I don't even know if we need to initialize it. Okay. So value would probably be uh, this state from and this one this state too I actually did something super similar for the search for maybe I can just copy this instead yeah I'm, I'm, yeah okay hmm trying to think do I want to uh, do I need a value here maybe not or maybe right so for the search form I'm updating the state and then I have a submit button so I think I want to do the same thing here and yeah Uh, yeah, this one. Well, actually, okay, I'm going to copy this because it's going to be quicker. So update from date, update to date. That's, uh, we also want to do that. So that's, that's good. So like searching and creating a new booking are similar, except in one case, uh, when someone clicks submit, we trigger a search. And the other case, we um, we trigger a mutation. Yeah. And by the way, the search is just a, a router.push. Uh, where is it? Here. And then we use the URL to pass the, the arguments. So it's pretty simple. Okay. 
Uh, let's go back to here. So we have our form. We have our date pickers that will update um, the date, update from date, update to date. We need a, a submit form, a submit button, sorry. We can use the same thing, except we're gonna, um, let's see. This import button. And then submit form. Okay, so first we need to wrap this with, uh, with new. So let, let's go over what we have here actually. So with current user, uh, we want to have access to the current user. Uh, messages, that's so that we're able to show a flash message saying the booking has been created. With router is so we're able to redirect to the URL of the booking we just created. Uh, with new is so that we're able to get the new mutation. So uh, how do we use with new? Let's double check. So it does take some options. So let's add this. And um, okay, what are the options? Um, just basically the collection. So bookings. Are we importing bookings? Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, remove this. Um, and then what else? Uh, that's about it. So we have fragment and fragment name. Um, right. So one thing that uh, Smart Forms does is it will try to it will generate, it will guess the fragment for you. Now with new doesn't do that. So we probably do want to pass a fragment. Otherwise it's not going to know what to return and it's not going to work at all. So, okay. How do we create a fragment? Um, we have to call GQL, pass uh, a string and then uh, so what are we trying to do? Bookings, booking fragment on booking, and we want the, let's say type name, ID, I guess we want everything, but you know, so type name, ID, created that, user ID, I don't have, you know, ideally I would have like a fragment that already exists, but I don't. So let's do it like this. Room ID. And also, you know, maybe with new could guess the fragment just like smart form does. And actually pay that, it won't be paid, so it won't work, but um, for now that, that will work. So uh, import, is it uh, React Apollo? You want, let me find another place where I'm using this just so I don't make any mistakes. Um, let's search for that. Right, okay. No, okay, yeah, I had it completely wrong. So it's not React Apollo, it's React GraphQL tag. And let's double check the the syntax for creating fragments, fragment, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that should be good. So we have our mutation options. We have with new, which we need to import also from Vulkan core. And then, um, probably we want to specify a mutation name. So I, I, I don't often use with new, right? Because I'm using a uh, smart form usually. So I forgot the... Oh, no, I, I mean, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we don't need to, it's, it's, um, yeah, we already have our mutation, so we, we don't need to name it. 
so we're all good to go uh let's see so this is our bookings new form first of all of all oh, sorry let's see if this runs and if it does run let's see if we have our uh, mutation being passed current user is not defined on bookings new form render that's because i update i adapted okay first of all i'm not importing form c so that's that's going to be bad Yeah, actually, I don't need form C, do I? I don't think I do. To be honest, I, I can, I'm kind of forgetting what exactly form C does right now, because uh, I already have a button, so you know people can just click the button if they want to submit the form. That seems easy enough. Yes, and so this should be this dot props dot current user. And similarly, this yes. The booking will come from here. Do we have everything we need? I think we do. Let's reload. Let's take some water. Yeah, I think when I stream, things get a bit slow. Sorry about that. Another thing that can happen is sometimes just the, the dev tools um, slow things down. Yeah, I think that's what was happening. The React dev tools can take up a lot of memory, especially when there's errors or, or problems. So uh, what do we want to do? We want to see if our new mutation is getting passed to the component. So, booking is new form, and yeah, new mutation right there. So what this means is that here we can call this.props.newMutation. How does new mutation work? Uh, well, it takes the document. So, yeah, it takes a document, an object with a document property, and the document here will be um, to, so it's not named to and from, it's named start at and that. Now, um, or from and to dates are on the state, but they are moment objects, so we need to convert them to dates. And same for end at. And that should do the trick, I think. Oh, and, and then this will be a promise, so we can do this. then uh, result. Yeah, actually, we just do this dot success. So here we're gonna let's log this out. Yeah, and um, see what happens. So this should get us back, assuming it works, it should get us back to where we were when we were using smart forms. So, you know, not super complex, but obviously if you can just use, you know, one line of code with smart forms, that's that's better. It's just just easier, right? And you know, I'm not even sure it actually works yet. I might have forgotten something. But you know, it, it's cool to see how uh, how you can rebuild Volt and stuff manually, right? So, say one uh, August one two three. Okay, this state from two date is not a function, and did I get it wrong? Maybe. Um. Are you?
are these not mo moment objects or uh, well you know easy way to check again uh, the react inspector to the rescue except it's not um, okay from oh no uh, there are strings oh okay right yeah because it's for the uh okay I, i'll just put the two date here for the the search component i was converting them to strings to send them to the url but no problems i can here i want dates so i'll do two date here to convert from a moment to a date object and then i can just use it like that perfect Reload, wait. So meter can be a little slow to reload sometimes, uh, but I think here the the fact that I'm streaming and that it's probably slowing down my my laptop a lot that uh, doesn't help. Comus had actually a prototype a next JS version of Vulkan. So that might be really cool because uh, Next.js uses Webpack, so you get hot code reloading, hot module reloading. Room ID is required. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, that, that's my bad this time. Obviously, we want to specify the room ID. How do we get it? Well, where, do, where are we calling Booking's new form from? Probably from rooms page. And it's getting the room as a prop. So when we submit the form, room ID would be available at this props room.id. Yeah, one thing I like about React is it gets very logical once you get used to it, like everything is a prop or uh, part of the state. But you don't really have to guess at how you're transmitting data, like. Uh, before React, we were using Blaze and, and doing things kind of a more meteor way. And the problem with that is your data might come as, as a prop or a, or a state or the, the equivalent. It also might come from the database directly because the database is, is cached on the client or at least part of it. It might come from the, the session. So you always have to think, or the router, you always had to think uh, where your data was coming from. And React, even if you're getting something from the router or from the database or from wherever, it's still going to be a prop, right? So that can feel, feel a bit constraining sometimes, but... Okay, so it kind of worked, except it redirected us to booking slash undefined. Um, But our, oh, okay, yeah, and that's because, yes, we, here, wait, where is it, success, so we're not actually getting the booking object, we're getting the GraphQL return object, so result, and then let's call this dot success on, what was it, result dot data dot bookings new. And that should work. So let's assume it did work and we were redirected here. What would we see? We'd see our booking. Yep. Progress. Now, okay, the whole point of doing this was to use custom um, validate functions. What was it called again? Yeah. So, okay, now things are getting interesting again. Um, let's start with, yeah, let's start with the same function we had before. So, uh, current date, selected date, and then
do we are people going to be able to pick the the second date before the first one if you know what i mean uh let, let's see how airbnb does it actually can i pick the checkout before so if i want to check out okay so that's interesting the past dates are not disabled so i can check out on in the past that makes no sense Okay, and then everything is disabled. So okay, let's clear dates. Um, oh, but for the check-in, dates in the past are disabled. So are dates that are already booked. But what I was wondering is if I, okay, if I wanna check out on August 16, would it then disable? No, okay, I can. Yeah, it's weird, right? It should disable this, you can't pick, but they probably tested this out and maybe people pick this one by mistake first. So they let just let you pick a different one and kind of correct this instead of disabling. If they did disable the check-in date according to the checkout date, then you would have to go back to the checkout, change the checkout, go back to check-in. So that might make sense. Um, so for now, I'm not gonna worry about the edge case of pe people picking the checkout date first. So again, import moment. So this is gonna just gonna have to be in the past or in the in the future. I mean, same here. Wait, moment for moment. Okay, I don't know why. Okay. Just slow. And then, okay, what else do we want to do? What we do want to accomplish is that if, um, we want to make sure that the current date, wait, no. We want to make sure Current date. So we want to make sure the current date is after yesterday and also that it is after the to the from date. And it's hard to think about these things and explain them at the same time. So uh, is after, I mean, and not or. So this dot state dot from and we do want to wrap this in a moment. I don't like these spaces here. Okay, so here we have three conditions. The from date has to be in the in the future. The to date has to be in the future and the to date has to be after the from date. So again, I apologize for everything being so slow. So, okay, August 10, so. Huh. Why would it not work? Even the part about uh, disabling past dates is not working, so. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Is valid date. Or maybe, oh, it just hasn't reloaded yet. It's that slow, huh? I was like, oh, for once it was fast. It's already down reloading. No, it just hadn't started. You know, I think we're all figuring things as we go and I need to figure out how to make this thing faster when I stream.
Okay, so second try, August 10th, and now July, and everything up to August 10th is disabled. Now that was part one of what we wanted to accomplish. Part two is disabling dates that are already booked. That's gonna be harder. I might actually leave this for tomorrow uh, because it will take a little bit of time. We have to basically build our own custom resolver and our own custom container. Um, you know, not nothing too tough, but it will be interesting. So tune in probably tomorrow for the next part of this stream. See ya.